Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I've been asked loads of times uh, by people how I turn and fit one of the 5 8 quick release units. Um, I won't go into detail about these, there's plenty on my website and on YouTube. Um, so, look, I'm going to show you how I do this and uh, dead simple step by step. Okay, first thing I'm going to show you I've got it mounted between centers, we've got a step center here and a ring drive here. Okay. I prefer these because I don't get deeper holes at the end um, and sometimes a deep, if you were to use a cone center here it tends to want to self feed and when you're drilling your hole at this end the, the drill or the uh, forcing bit can wander off so I only want one small little hole at the end and the forcing bit tends not to, uh, to wander off we want this to fit in as accurately as possible dead center okay so I'm going to set up uh, turn it to the round I'll explain this I'm going to put a tenon on this side. I'm just going to leave it square and then we're going to fit it in the chuck. I'm going to mount it, mount the uh, drill bit. I'm going to drill down the center to a certain depth, take our time, clear out the lands. Um, then we're going to fit the ferrule. After we fit the ferrule, we'll take it to the round. Um, I'll put the, ship, we'll put the shape directly in. We'll put the shape directly in, scorch it and finish it. Okay, so there you go. Um, See you in a minute when I get set up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just turn this section round, put a tenon on it so it'll fit in the chuck, um, bring the tool rest to here. Uh, actually, I don't need to do that. We'll drill the hole, fit things. I'll show you right now. The small piece of wood, so fairly fast. What's that, 2000? there, parting tool, and leave a little shoulder for the truck to be supported again. So, we have a look at this, Just take this out. Take the center, it's on the step center, put that in here. We're gonna tighten this up. Sits on that little shoulder and just tighten it, just tighten it so it sits in there. We're gonna adjust it to do the drilling now. Okay, put the point of the force in a bit just in the in the hole and have it just sitting there so it's sitting on the pin. Right in the middle. Tighten that. Loosen this, and we're going to turn the speed down, and then start the uh, start the drilling. Measure how deep you need to go. That's on about eight hundred. Just take this slow. If the ash is particularly open grained, the drill may want to wander. Depending on the wood, you might want to drill a pilot hole first. Speed this in nicely. Clear the lands. Make sure the lands there don't plug up. Okay, don't worry that's running slightly out. This is what we're going to do now. Let's take the uh, Forstner bit out and put in the cone center. Make sure that's engaged. That just straightens everything up. Make sure the chuck's tight as before. Yeah, tighten that up there. Perfect. That's now dead center, the hole's running, even if this moves slightly, we need to pull the, pull the uh, drill bit away. That's dead center, we can now take it to the round and start to uh, force it. 
form, the shape, and at the same time will fit the ferrule, the gold ferrule on the end, down here. This is what I use, inside, outside calipers. Measure the inside, it gives you the size you want there for the inside, and we'll just try them on. Simple parting tool. that away just a touch more again just make sure everything's nice and tight That will be a beautiful tap on fit, nice and tight. Oh, sorry, not too tight. I can, you can see that's just going to slip on. A little mallet would tap at home. That's what we want. Now, you can start to form the shape of your piece. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to loosen this. Bring this up to there. There we go. Tighten that. Tighten this. Put the pressure on here. Tighten that. Okay. Rough and out gouge, shape it to whatever shape you feel. You would uh, feel comfortable in your hand. I'm going to drop the tool off to touch. Rough and out gouge, make sure it's cutting on the center line. That's tight. That noise and stop the tool rest before you move the uh, stop the piece before you move the tool rest.
So it's a little bit of a flat up here. I'm just going to move this higher. Oh, get some oil. Okay, to finish this end off, what I'm going to do is loosen this, take away the revolving centre and put, because I'm going to get a little bit more handle out of this, put the step centre back in, where to put that, up here. So that goes on there, tighten that. Move this back a touch, put the cone back down the middle of the hole, just nip that up. And we've got another good inch of handle there. Too many manufacturers, I feel, they never make the handles long enough. Especially for some of the tools we're using, the uh, carbide tools, hollowing tools. It's also nice to be able to get the tool into your, into your body. little curve in there. Then parting tool, just put a slight curve in at the back. Good, that's good. So now, I'm sure that's good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is scorch it and finish it. Before you fit that felt, you don't want to burn it. Chaff, fine. If you've got a decent cut from the uh, till and there's no tear out, that'll scorch really nicely. Okay, so now we're going to scorch it. Scorch it away from where you're going to fit the, uh, the felt. You don't want to burn the, that, that bit of wood there. Burn it until you can see the grain, the actual grain itself, go a dull red. Watch. There you go. That makes it easier for the wire brush to take away the, uh, the excess soft parts which are burnt. So I usually burn it, maybe for a couple of inches, and then go back. There you go. You see that yellow flame? Now it's done. Just scratch away with the grain. Do not go across the grain, go with the grain. Scratch away all that excess. Be quite firm with this. And you'll get to a stage where it looks all the same kind of tone. Cut rid of all the, the loose bits down in the grain. Then, I'm gonna use this stuff here. It's a great base 
It's called um, Howard's Feeding Wax. So we've got on here, and we're literally just gonna wax that. You can see it's soaking into the into the wood, and it's drying. That wood's hot. <coughs> soaking right in. Just keep going over it. There we we'll go. So that's the good base, and again, that is dry more or less as you're putting it on. I can see it's soaking in a little bit more. And that's a good base. And now we're just going to get the, um, the lacquer and we're going to lacquer it up. Just give that one minute. There's a little bit more here. That's still hot to the okay, touch. Okay, so that should, that's dry now. What we're going to do is just take off the excess on the surface. The wood's still hot. Yeah, it's still hot to the touch. Lacquer, three catalyzed gloss lacquer. Again, that's just gonna dry really quick. And believe it or not, it takes really well on top of that waxy finish. There we go, and I'm getting a nice satin sheen there. And this is a real good protective coat. The handle feels like a handle. That's soaking in nicely. Again, with the wood being hot, it dries very, very quickly. And what you can do, make sure there's no heavy bits. It's just about soaked in. Once it's soaked into the surface, then we'll go and switch this on. That will dry much quicker. That. There we go. That's dry to the touch now, and and the handle's still hot. So what we do? Take this away. We'll just hold that in place. That is tapped onto there, and then that sits into there. And there you go. There's your quick release handle. Um, I make the standard size 16 inches, and the longer size for hollowing tools, mermaid tools, whatever. Um, I make them 22. You want that leverage. And again, this is a nicer handle. You're holding the tool here, you can hold it there, and you can get the tool into your body, located three places. That's as easy as that, okay? Hope you enjoyed it. See you later.